specific steps that uh, we needed to address, detect that, that there's new data that is ready to be onboarded and figure out, uh, inspect the layout and format of that data. Then do the read, of course, the map, the transform, assess quality before finally loading it uh, to the target system. And want to detect issues uh, and log progress as we go through each of those steps. But probably most important is that we want this sort of framework, these seven steps, uh, to be a reusable process, right? A single generic data pipeline that will do these things uh, for any data from any client, right? We lay these steps on their side and it already starts to maybe look like a data pipeline. So now here's our first look at some actual Clover DX uh, uh, product, right? This is Clover DX's uh, designer IDE loaded up as though someone was building a top level onboarding data job. You can see the menu items along the top and various controls and, and panels around the edges all support the idea of developing in a low code, highly visual way, a onboarding data pipeline. All right, let's zoom in and just look at the actual pipeline itself. Uh, again, it, the, the steps it should start to uh, become visible, right? Detecting the data that's available. Um, here we're matching that uh, data from a particular client with a configuration file before we do a read, transform, validate, and, and push to the uh, target. Errors can occur at any point along the way. You can see that uh, most of these stages have uh, secondary edges coming out of them. Uh, that's where error information arrives. We collect those errors. Uh, build a log entry and, and place that log entry someplace where our operators can, uh, you know, react, All right? Successful uh, ingestions get logged as well. And then there's actually some post-processing that's being done after the, after the data is successfully onboarded. Uh, you know, you can call some other process or kick off some other downstream process to further operate uh, or, or somehow act on the fact that new data has been injected uh, into the system. So now I mentioned in this process, uh, an interesting step, which was uh, matching a client's data with a specific configuration file, right? That's what's being done here in these two steps, right? Data, we detected data became available. So we got some data from some client. We want to go look up a configuration file to give us instructions on how the rest of the pipeline should behave, All right? So that's what's being done in these two phases. So a word or two about configuration files, because uh, it's a very uh, key practice for developing a single pipeline uh, that's gonna work for many different clients. The idea of using a configuration files to hold uh, all the client specific detail. When you abstract that client detail out of the pipeline and use some external config, you're leaving behind essentially a generic orchestration uh, framework, right? Now, the configuration itself can be stored anywhere, flat files, database tables. Uh, we often like to use Excel for these configurations uh, for several reasons. They're, they're human readable. Uh, they actually can serve a dual purpose in addition to instructing the pipeline how to behave. Uh, we can share this doc, you know, the, the, the Excel uh, sheet with the, the end client. Say, hey, look, this is how we're about ready to treat your data. And if there are any issues, you know, that document can serve as a sort of a, uh, a launching point for discussions with the client on, on you know, how uh, the ingest may have not uh, worked as was expected, right? And then of course, uh, Excel's, you know, universally known, it's a lot easier uh, to allow less technical staff, right? To build these config files, to modify them and to actually uh, use them to operate the pipeline. I have a real configuration file here. We can take a quick look at. Again, we're in the FinTech space here, looking to uh, process financial transactions, config file, that we did for this particular solution had three tabs. You can see across the bottom here, overview, attribute, state of quality. First tab, 
just some metadata about the client who's sending us this data, uh, what their name is, a unique ID for them, some contact information about uh, who to reach out to if there are issues, and some other metadata about expected arrival times uh, for uh, particular data, right? Second tab uh, has got the meat of the mapping, right? The, the records that, or the fields that we expect uh, to be in the file that the client is providing us, uh, the data types uh, that uh, we're going to be treating them as, some additional actual rules. Uh, this column E over here is, is specifying whether or not we should encrypt a uh, particular field. Uh, and land it in our target system as encrypted, so we don't um, expose any private information. And maybe you know whether or not we should, as we're reading the file, we should allow you know nulls to be uh, in uh, up here in the data set, right? So configuration specifically for this uh, client's data set. Last tab on the configuration was some um, uh, data quality rules, right? So we can extract the client-specific data quality rules, get them into a spreadsheet uh, where uh, the customer can understand them and then Clover can actually translate into runtime uh, business rules. It can be at the file level, this file uh, better you know, have you know, a certain number of records in it, uh, a certain number of uh, ID fields that are null, particular fields can have uh, individual uh, data quality assessments, but all of this data quality rules uh, for the client's specific data extracted out of the pipeline and placed into the spreadsheet. So all of the information we need on board a particular client data set uh, now in this file, right? The pipeline uses this file uh, when a new client file, uh, client data set arrives, we match it with this config file and then the actual uh, ingestion can begin, right? So ingestion, right? That's uh, the next step uh, highlighted here in the center, the actual core of the processing, reading the data and, and um, processing it and getting it into uh, our system, right? So let's, uh, let's dive through this particular segment of the, of the top level pipeline and look at, at the underlying Clover job there, right? That looks like this sort of complicated. So let's, uh, let's try to look at that, look at it a piece at a time uh, and point out some interesting uh, parts, right? So uh, first of all, the happy path, right? What we want is to follow the red line here, which is you know, to read the file, do the transformations, do the quality assessments, uh, and then get it out you know, to the target output format, right? So that's the way we want all the data to flow through our system. Other pieces uh, worth noting, uh, first, you know, the first step, uh, which is uh, reading the file. Remember, this is a generic pipeline that works on any client file, right? So with Clover DX, we're going to allow you to design pipelines with reader components like this one that don't have any a priori knowledge of the content that they're reading. That information was extracted from the configuration file and used to configure this reader so it knows what it's supposed to be expecting in the file. And that happens uh, at runtime. This upper section here, quick record count uh, of, the, of the file. Uh, make sure that uh, we have roughly the number of records that we're expecting. If not, you know, maybe reject the file. If it doesn't have any record, if it's an empty file or only has like a, a, a dozen records in it, uh, that's not a file that we want to introduce into the system. In this case, we were looking for a range, say between a thousand and, and 1500 records is what you, what we were expecting in this file, uh, in this data set, incoming data set. Uh, anything that uh, violates that, we will simply stop the process. That's a configuration parameter, right? Client specific. Um, that allows us to do that sort of data quality check. Transformation, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this particular client had a key requirement that uh, some of the data that was coming in from their clients needed to be encrypted uh, before it landed in their systems. So, uh, in or in our systems, right? So uh, this particular phase of the pipeline, identifying which fields needed to be encrypted, again, from the configuration file, uh, encrypting them and then uh, reintegrating them with the rest of the record set uh, before pushing down to the next step. Next step, data quality, 
right? Uh, do the data quality checks, make sure they're, you know, a particular date field better not have any dates in the future. Uh, this particular field better only have one of a set of uh, allowed values that are, you know, specified in some lookup. It's gonna be a mix of, uh, of baseline rules for your platform, as well as uh, maybe client specific rules for this particular uh, data set, right? Records that fail data quality are, are logged along with the reason they're rejected. Uh, the fact that we found invalid records at all uh, is registered with uh, the main job orchestration. That's what's going on with this yellow component here. Uh, but then more importantly, we're creating a file, a human readable file of the records that were rejected and why they were rejected. Those records can then be evaluated, corrected, uh, and reprocessed. So we have some ability now to rapidly re-execute our onboarding process, identify those bad records, fix them, rerun the pipeline, all without needing to have a developer step in. Right? Then of course, the last step, uh, writing the transformed and validated records to our target endpoint. So uh, when development of our whole pipeline the, or the top level orchestration, as well as this detailed ingestion. When that's complete, uh, the whole process is ready to be moved from Clover DX Designer over to Clover DX Server, where it can operate in production. Right? Our Clover DX Server will allow you to uh, run these onboarding jobs automatically and unattended, as well as monitoring those executions, logging their results, and alerting if there are any errors that occur. So I'll pivot now and show you a couple of screenshots of Clover DX's server uh, component and how it's handling you know, all of the automation of this job that we've built, right? So let's talk about automat running these onboarding jobs automatically and unattended. The most uh, Common way to do that is with our scheduler, right? So here's a screenshot of the Clover DX server console where we're looking at the schedule for an onboarding uh, service, right? We can see graphically um, when the last run was, when the next run is supposed to be. Uh, we can enable or disable the schedule, or we can simply uh, click on a button and ask the, the, the process to kick off immediately without waiting until uh, the next scheduled time. So all that available to you in the console. Another interesting uh, feature of the server, uh, well, of, design, of Clover in general, is that all of our onboarding jobs, the jobs that you create, well, we will automatically generate REST endpoints uh, so that you can interact with those jobs on demand. So instead of running on a schedule, you can run when you need to, right? Particularly useful uh, in the onboarding process if you need to reprocess a certain data set or send through a set of corrected records. Here, for example, uh, a little web form that sits on top of the API endpoint for our onboarding job. We can specify uh, a, a, a set of records and maybe in addition to the set of records, we wanna change the configuration file. We can specify a new configuration file, a couple of other parameters, mash the button, uh, and we've got a non-technical user, a less technical user anyways, ability to be able to affect when an onboarding job runs and the criteria that is being used to actually execute it. Right. See this a lot for uh, error correction, right? Bring in a, a 5,000 records, you know, a few hundred of them fail. We know what they did. We know why they failed. We fix them. We put them back at the front of the pipeline and it just runs again. And uh, this time just with the uh, corrected record set. Right? Uh, so lots of ways to automate uh, or control the execution uh, profile when our onboarding jobs are actually going to run. We want to monitor the whole, the whole system. Uh, Clover has a dashboard that will allow you at a glance status of how your onboarding jobs are behaving. 
right? So uh, if you see something red, for example, here, that says, you know, the one of the onboarding jobs uh, has come up with an issue. Um, we know at a glance if there's something going on, we click this little card, we can get immediately to uh, detailed uh, execution history uh, for that particular instance of that particular job. Um, we know why the job failed. We know when it failed. We know where it failed uh, because we have a graphical representation. The same representation that we had in our design environment now is showing you how much data flowed through the pipeline before it failed and where in the pipeline the failure occurred, making it uh, very easy to triage and diagnose issues uh, with your automated uh, onboarding jobs.